working. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you so much for understanding. I had to postpone the live because um, our neighbor has been mowing his lawn um, all morning. Wonderful neighbors, um, but it's been so loud and I think he's still mowing the lawn. So bear with me if it gets too loud and you can't hear me, um, I'll try to talk louder. Okay, so um, I had someone request, uh, forgive me, I forgot the name, on the community page um, of vegetables, uh, perennial vegetables, as well, as well as shade tolerant crops that you can grow and that we grow. So first I'll go over the ones that um, I'm, something mine, I'm currently growing and actually I started some seedlings. So I made a list too in case I forget, but so far what I have in a garden growing are perennial, perennial crops, which are crops that come back year after year. You don't have to keep planting them every season as long as they are hardy to your zone. <gasps> Hi, hi, my brother. Hi, Martin. Thank you so much for joining. So um, I'll go over my list and then I'll take a walk in the garden. I'll show you the perennial crops that we have been growing. And I think I've got some seedlings that I started upstairs. So I'll just kind of tell you what those are later on. So uh, number one, we have, we all, we grow, <laughs> can't talk. We grow a uh, purple tree collard. So that's a perennial uh, brassica plant. So it's a collard green and it's uh, perennial to um, cold tolerance down to around 20, 20, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you live in um, my zone, zone eight and above and just mulch in the winter time, mulch the ground around it to keep it insulated. Um, it is a perennial crop. So that the first one again is purple tree collards. Oh my gosh, you know what? I might put my hat on because I can't see. That's better. Okay, so hi Steven and Francesca, hello, and Wayne Parks, hello. Been following your ch the channel for a long time. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Wayne. Appreciate appreciate you hopping on to the on the live. Hi Enriched Refuge. Yeah, very warm. Oh, 100. Oh goodness. Today's not as bad. We're only around 80s. The, two days ago, we're at 90 degrees. Hot in Tacoma, Wayne. Stay cool. Um, drink water. Stay hydrated. And Ethel Anderson, hello there. Okay, so I'm gonna head back to my list of perennial crops. Okay. So the next one is Merit Collard. So it's another perennial brassica plant, and again, hardy to around um, 24, 25 degrees. And sometimes they can withstand a little bit of um, colder weather, even some snow, but you should insulate it. A prolonged period of exposure to snow will kill the plants. And that has happened to my purple tree collards three years ago. The first year I grew them, they sat in the snow for I think almost two weeks. That's a little too long. They can probably withstand about three or four days of snow, but longer than that. The roots rotted, the stems rotted, and they died. So, okay, so the first two, again, it's a purple tree collard and merit tree collard, or merit collard. It could, I, actually, I think it's merit kale or collard. Oh gosh, I can't remember, but um, those are great perennial crops. Um, hi, Wallace Life, hello, hello from Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, so Stephen puts a cover crop around the green, over the greenhouse for the cooling. Nice, okay, but leaves are yellowing, oh no. Um, Got lots of cukes, awesome. Chicken burrs, still waiting for mine. Oh, let me, okay. I'll just leave the chat on so I can see you guys. So number three is sorrel. So I have uh, red vein sorrel in the garden and sorrel is cold hardy all the way down, oops, a bug, uh, down to uh, negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, sorrel is a great one to add to your perennial, perennial garden. And hello from Maryland. It, is it? Can't see. Um, Rocky Tack. Thank you so much. Okay. I don't have my computer, my laptop with me, so I have to look at the screen and the font is so small. So bear with me, guys. Okay. So number three again is sorrel. And number four is walking onions. The ones I have are Egyptian walking onions. And those are perennials. They can um withstand temperatures i think i believe all the way down i think they're hardy too zones three and four or four at least four so around negative 30 negative 30 degrees fahrenheit so walking onions and number four is um 
that was number four number five jerusalem artichokes so jerusalem artichokes they are cousin a cousin of the sunflower family and the tubers that they produce the starchy tubers uh can be prepared like potatoes um so that's what these uh this plant produces is the tubers that are edible now after you harvest it's a great idea to leave the, some of the tubers in the ground because they'll come back year after year and in fact i thought i harvested all of the most of the tubers in one of the garden beds and they were sprouting all over the place so when you're growing jerusalem artichokes try to keep them contained in their own garden box or in a pot otherwise they can actually take over an area of your garden so that's number five and again um you grow them for the edible tubers, okay? I think someone just hop on the chat there. The purple Russian kale is looking nice. This, oh, are those the seeds I sent you years ago? Is it too late and hot? Start cucumber and squash. Um, It's not too late to start cucumbers and squash because they mature, let's see, between 50 to 60 days. So you can start them indoors if it's too hot outside or start them outside in a protected area where they get afternoon shade so away from the strong rays of the afternoon sun. So you can definitely start more squash. I actually sowed some squash seeds, seeds last week and they're just starting to pop up. So, and I might actually do another sowing since the one I have matures in about, I think 50 days, 45, 50 days, it's uh, an heirloom yellow squash. And on the packets, it says, as long as it's planted in full sun, it'll mature within 45, maybe 50 days. So I might actually do another sowing. So I've been uh, sowing squash seeds every two to three weeks because I want to make sure I, we get a continuous harvest since we had a late start because of the squirrels digging up the seeds and the bunnies eating the seedlings. So yeah, you can definitely um, keep sowing seeds, just seeds, squash, and cucumber seeds. Just plant them in full sun if you can. At least six to eight hours or more is of sun, more is um, always better. So fresh landscape, hello. Got my first three water, oh, watermelon. Nice, oh, congratulations. I have not been successful with watermelons. Um, same issue again. So now they're starting to grow and hopefully i mean it's still teeny tiny watermelon seedling so i don't know what i'm going to get because um the seeds were they were just getting dug up all the time and then we had such a um, cold and wet um, month last month so everything was just growing really slow let's see here so steven spaghetti squash nice on the squash two weeks ago and enrich refuge i covered my swiss chard beets and carrots with bed sheets and covered them okay so like a shade cloth um three feet of maple leaves from my tree nice okay good good mulch and beets carrots fresh all winter very nice so you, you can um absolutely absolutely um overwinter your root crops that's very really smart and the colder it is the um, sweeter your root crops will be because um, they'll produce more sugar throughout the cold months to protect themselves from the cold okay so we'll be picking a huge tomato oh nice so you grew some beefsteak tomatoes we just picked our first sun gold tomatoes i got one the kids ate the rest because they were so good and they were so sweet so um, I really I savored that one I got. The rest of them were still greenish or most of them were green. So they're starting to ripen up though. Ashley's allotment. Hi there from the UK. Hi, Ashley. Okay. All right. So Noir, to Noir tomato. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to head back to my list, guys. Of perennial, perennial crops. So I think the one I mentioned was Jerusalem artichokes. That was number five. Now, number six is um, bunching onions, which is evergreen bunching onions and or hishiko is a, a Japanese bun bunching onion. And those ones come back year after year. So um, I know some of the um, bunching onions that you buy are actually immature onions that, that usually grow bulbs. But these bunching onion varieties, they will come back every year for you and they will multiply. Um, oh, that's a big B. <laughs> With, through the lateral growth so they spread kind of this sideways like this same thing with chives and egyptian walking onions and as well as leeks and leeks actually this one of the ones in here it should be yeah so leeks is another one so even though we grow them as annual or biennial but they do multiply 
um, through lateral growth, just like with chives, um, bunching onions. So leeks is actually, you can leave them in the ground and they'll grow laterally and then they'll produce for you if you just leave them, um, let, let them be. So I know a lot of us grow them as annuals, but leeks are actually a, a true peren perennial plant. So that's number seven was leeks. And um, number nine is, um, I actually just started this from seeds and it's upstairs. I forgot to grab them and show you, but it's from the Brasca family. So number Oh gosh, what's the number seven? Oh, I'm lost. Number number eight, sorry, nine star broccoli. So it's another perennial brassica plant and it actually grows these um, florets similar to cauliflower. So this one is uh, perennial to zone eight. So the cold hardiness is down to around 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. You heard the lawnmower, so it might get loud. I might have to move. So that's what's been going all day, all day. So that's why I couldn't get on live and I really wanted to be out here with you guys. So I can actually walk around the garden. I might actually, he's coming. Maybe not, maybe he's going the other way. So if, if he moves closer, I might have to move and sit somewhere else. Oh, starting some peas. I'm waiting on that um, closer to August, which is soon, it's still too warm. So Stephen McHale, hi everybody, everyone, everybody in the US, do you grow perennial kale? Yes, we're just talking about that. Awesome. Um, actually growing sea kale. Okay, so the sound's not too too bad until he gets close and you won't be able to hear me. Okay, so um, nine star broccoli is a brassica plant and um, again hardy to zone eight or around 10 or 15 degrees Fahrenheit. The next one, number nine, is sea kale. Um, which is that someone mentioned the perennial kale. So sea kale is also known as crambe maritima and this is hardy to zone six. So um, something to keep in mind since it is hardy to zone six, um, if you live in a colder climate, you can grow sea kale as a perennial plant. So I have these seedlings right now up on a deck. So I'm so excited to grow these varieties. So that was number nine and I think I'm on number 10, also started some Claytonia, so it's also called Miner's Lettuce, and it's a good source of vitamin C, and Claytonia or Miner's Lettuce is perennial to zone 6. I have a list here, just in case I forget, that's why I'm looking down. So did someone say something, Ashley? Let's see. Um, okay, Fresh Landscape, uh, what zone am I in, do you know? Oh, uh, if you're in California, you're either between, I think, zones 9 to 10. So I would type in Sacramento, California, um, and then just um, DA cold hard in a zone map. And it's coded by color. See, it's getting louder. Okay, I'm going to get closer so you can hear me. So, okay, so that was number, did I say number 10? It was Claytonia Miner's Lettuce. Okay, so number 11. So we, you guys know we grow this we've grown this in our garden for forever rhubarb and rhubarb is hardy to about um, 24 degrees fahrenheit so rhubarb and um, fairly easy to grow ours thrive in about oh gosh they get a lot of afternoon sun I'm, I'm gonna say average about five to six hours of sun so about at least four to six hours of sun and rhubarb is um, harvested for the stalks the stalks only not the leaves the leaves are poisonous so don't eat rhubarb leaves um, it's got um, oxalic acid which can make you sick if you eat them in high amounts okay so that was rhubarb okay and i'll um, go back on the chat as soon as i'm done with the list uh, uh was that 11 okay i'm like losing track here i'm not sure if that's 11 or 12 but the next one i'm just gonna say this is maybe that was 12 so or 11 sorry guys 12 is garlic so i know we grow garlic as an annual we plant them in the fall we harvest them harvest them the following summer but if you were to leave a whole garlic bulb in the ground they will start sprouting that following fall and you, then you can divide them up and plant each clove individually during your fall planting and in fact i just harvested some garlic yesterday in the past week hi irene hi irene good to see you so i will upload that video tonight on my garlic harvest and um, some of the elephant garlic that i harvested had a whole bunch of corms attached to the roots so corms with an m not n corm um are like the 
elephant garlic seed. So a lot of them fall in the ground and I don't even harvest them because they just, you know, kind of fall off the roots and they come back every year. So garlic, either the elephant garlic or just regular hard neck or soft neck garlic, if you were to leave some cloves in the ground, just let them be and they'll propagate themselves and you can divide them. So um, I consider it's um, a perennial crop because I have had garlic grow on their own without me having to sow any, any cloves or the garlic corms. They just come back in one of this, these beds and I just harvested a whole bed of elephant garlic in one of the beds that I didn't even plant. They just keep coming back because those corms will stay in the ground and sprout every year. And then when I harvest it, um, I can replant it because uh, if elephant garlic is grown from that little tiny corm that looks kind of like a tiny clove, that first season would produce a round garlic bulb. So it's immature, then you plant them again in the fall and then harvest them the following summer. And I actually explained that in my garlic harvest video. So I'll upload that tonight, okay? So that was number 12. Number 13, one of my favorite ornamental and edible crop, scarlet runner beans. So scarlet runner beans is actually um, hardy to around zone seven and eight and they produce edible tubers. So you can harvest the tubers and eat them like you would with any tubers like potatoes or Jerusalem artichokes, or you can leave them in the ground, mulch your soil, and they'll come back year after year. So I had one, maybe two come, come back from the tubers. So I didn't even sow scarlet runner beans on this side here, where I'm sitting on my right side. So a couple of the plants emerged from a tuber that was left in the ground. So. Besides the edible tubers, scarlet runner bean flowers are edible, the young bean pods, the mature seeds, of course you wanna cook the mature or beans first before you eat them, and even the young leaves are edible. So um, perenni um, scarlet runner beans are great. So, and again, mulch in the fall and winter months, okay? So that was number 13. So the other, the last two, number 13, 14, I have never grown. I actually wanted to plant asparagus, but um, what's, what is it? The, the roots that I bought, the dormant roots, um, was really dry and it never sprouted. So I think it just dried up out completely and it didn't grow for me last um, this past spring. So that didn't emerge. So number 13, asparagus and globe artichokes. So that's should be 14 perennial crops that I named um, today, okay? And then the other request was plants that thrive in the shade. And I have that on my list too. So I'll jump back on a chat after I go over the plants that thrive in the shade. And actually I am growing some over on that side, the south side of the garden where it's shaded by the trees. So shade tolerant crops that you can plant are lettuce, kale, spinach, also arugula, some of your root crops such as beets, radish, turnips, carrots, those thrive in the shade as well. And I'm gonna cheat and look at my list in case I forgot. Oh, chard will also thrive in the shade. I actually have some chard growing over to my left there in the shade that I sowed from seeds. Peas and beans also um, can thrive in the shade. And I actually have some peas over there as well. And, and bunching onions. Now keep in mind when you're planting these crops in the shade, make sure they get at least four to five hours of sun daily. So these shade tolerant crops, sometimes they'll thrive in about three hours of sun, such as arugula and Asian greens, such as bok choy, but at least four hours minimum of um, sunlight, I think would be best for these crops. Now also keep in mind that when you're planting crops in the shade, they're not going to mature as quick as the ones you plant in full sun because they're not getting all that energy from the sun or they're not making enough food from the energy that they, they get from the sun. <laughs> so just keep in mind that the crops will grow, grow slowly, but they'll still grow for you and they will tolerate shade or tolerate, yeah, part shade. So also a um, few more um, shade tolerant, actually these are herbs that you can plant in the sh uh, shade about three to four hours of sun daily, chives, cilantro, lemon balm, mint, oregano, and parsley, okay? 
So I hope that helps you, got, helps you out on what to decide to plant for your fall garden. And you can actually plant some um, herb starts this fall. So it's not a bad idea to plant some herb starts in the fall because then you don't have to worry about planting them in the spring. So as soon as you, as long as you plant them, I'm going to say about six to eight weeks before your first frost date, you'll get your perennial herbs established. And they'll go dormant in the winter time, but they'll come back in the spring for you and you'll have a head start. So I think that's all my, my list of spider webs. Okay, so let me go back to the chat. Oh. Let's see if you guys have any questions. I think I see Gang Gangin is here. So first landscape, guys, the silly is almost Oh my gosh, that's right. Thanks for the reminder. Um my husband reminded me I'm almost at 100k and I'm so excited because I'm going to do a giveaway for you guys and it's going to be a um, couple of giveaways so um, but I won't ruin the surprise but I'm going to work on that next week we'll do like a um, maybe a couple of days of giveaways for you guys for subscribers okay so stay tuned for that hello gang good to see you thanks for joining Okay, thank you, Ashley. And Joe Mac from Michigan. Hi there. Thanks for joining. So sounds delicious. Did someone harvest something? Oh, cilantro. And Stephen, Mikhail. I'm growing trail of tears beans. Plenty of flowers, but no beans yet. In Ireland. Nice. Are those the ornamental edible beans? Let's see. And. Okay, and it's Green Life Washington. Have you grown Blaholdi beans? I'm not sure if I said that correctly. No, I have not grown that before. Is that a perennial bean? So I'm just kind of scrolling down, guys. Asparagus, so Enriched Refuge has asparagus. Growing all over five acres. Oh my gosh, so nice. I love asparagus. Okay, oopsies. Orchards that were from 60 years plus. Nice. So I read my Scarlet Runner beans didn't produce any beans because of the hot weather. That is so true. Yes, in Central Valley, California. Yeah, when the temperature is above, whenever it got above 85 degrees, they said between 85 to 90, um, the flowers fall and they don't develop into fruit. So that's what, what can happen with Scarlet Runner beans is they thrive best um, between, I believe, 65 and 80 degrees. And even in the fall, my Scarlet Runner beans produce bean pods until November. So they actually don't mind the cooler weather. But in the summertime, that will happen. And that happens a lot with um, with a lot of fruits. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh, goodness. Did I miss a lot on the chat? Let's see. I'm just kind of scrolling, guys, to see if I miss anything else. Hello. Okay. I think I saw Ging. Okay. And Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. And thank you to all of you guys for your support. I think I'm really close to 100K. I, I didn't check today yet. I'm, I'm excited because I, I'm excited to share some seeds with, you, seeds with you guys too and some other things. So stay tuned, okay? So Fresh Landscape. Okay. Oopsies. Um, juicy Fruit Gum. <gasps> Joe Mac, you know what? My husband just um, bought a couple packs of Juicy Fruit Gum and he read about the mole thing. So he's trying that out. So I'm not sure what's going to happen if it's going to uh, stop our mole issue, but I mean, hopefully. So we'll see, okay? So Frances from Jessica, 99.9, okay, thank you. Um, so Juicy Fruit Gum. So Fresh Landscape. Oh gosh, yes, I, I've known Kelly Kim since we started YouTube back in 2012. And I actually shared the Scarlet Runner bean seeds with her a long time ago. So I'm not sure how many years that, that was, Fresh Landscape. So yes, yes, um, I've known her for a long, for a long time. I just um, don't have, um, I haven't had time to catch up. I try to support other channels and watch, but um, you know, we're all, also, as a YouTuber, we get busy with our own content, but I do try to support other people. But yeah, um, I believe she uh, started selling the Scarlet Runner bean seeds. So I think she grew them that one summer, I think that was six years ago, but that's a, 
The last time I gave away Scarlet Runner beans. So that's one of the seeds I want to give away. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I am having really bad luck. This happened on Saturday and my phone um, was disconnected. So let me move this away from the sun. My phone shut off because it said it was too hot. My phone was overheating. Sorry guys, I'm moving the tripod. And I actually had the phone right in the sun. So that wasn't smart. I'm in the shade now. So I think I lost some of you guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, I felt my phone. It was really hot. And so, um, and it says emergency shutdown or something because the phone's too hot and it won't work if it's too hot. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, you lost me for like a three minutes there. Um, okay, if cilantro get too crazy, I'll eat more of them. I love cilantro. Okay, so I'm back, um, fresh landscape. Okay, try it by will, hello. Yeah, this happened on Saturday when I tried to do the, um, the garden tour, the live garden walk, and I went too far that way, so I gotta stay away from that end because that's when I lost you guys and it totally logged me off. Okay, so let's see. I'm not sure if I missed any Bless to hi there. I'm back to you. Okay. Cilantro roots. Okay, I wish I had access to cilantro roots year round. I used them in making Thai. Ooh, and yummy. You can grow um, cilantro wane, and um, I usually grow them in mass. So instead of just a couple plants, I just let I let them um, seed, self seed, because I actually reserve that space for them. So if you have a space for them to self seed, um, you can do that and let just grow in mass and you can harvest the roots because you're right. Um, cilantro, um, the whole plant is pretty much edible, right? I think I put that in one of my videos. Or maybe I haven't yet. Oh, I need to publish that. But cilantro is great because you can, the, the roots are edible, the um, young stems, of course, the leaves. The flowers and the seeds the seeds we use as coriander i'm gonna lower this it's a little too high i'm like looking up okay so if you guys have any questions let me know and what are you guys planting right now oh um so green life washington purple tree colored you can get them at project tree color that's where i got mine and um i've got a couple over there on the corner they're kind of small just started them um, a couple months ago so project tree collard okay um, she's really awesome um, she sells also seeds and uh, purple tree collard cuttings so let's see where do you okay Wayne that's a good idea yeah if you Wayne if you can let them self seed but just make sure that you can maintain that area that way it doesn't take over your garden so just reserve a spot for them um, and even when you're letting your cilantro go to seed in a pot, you can pick out the seeds and plant them right away. And once the um, weather conditions are uh, favorable, they'll sprout. So usually they sprout back up before fall time when it starts to cool down. And I'll get some cilantro or younger plants throughout the winter season. And they're pretty hardy, guys. Cilantro's hardy to about 10, de 10 degrees Fahrenheit, so they can live through the winter months. Let's see here. I have cilantro with uh, peas. Nice. I think I've got the cilantro growing next to some beans. And are you going to the video of planting potatoes? Hi, oh, fresh landscape. So I plant, we plant a lot of potatoes every year. And I think, I guess I didn't do a video this year. I just did a video on hilling the potato mounds, but I do have a playlist on growing, harvesting and storing potatoes. So if you haven't seen that yet, make sure to check it out. Um, it's a little too late to plant potatoes right now. I do plant them when it's closer to spring or sometimes in the middle of winter if we don't get snow and if the ground is workable you can plant them in the winter time as long as your climate is mild. So again I'm in the Pacific Northwest Zone 8B so as long as the ground's not frozen you can plant them which is what I do and they'll sprout in the springtime when the um, ground warm, warms up. So too late to plant potatoes now though because if you want to harvest for the fall season that should have been planted in, before end of June, especially for the um, early varieties like Yukon Gold or Chieftain Red Potatoes. Those mature in about 75 to 90 days. Okay. 
Nice to know. Oops. Hello, Frank Rico. So this is a question. Okay, everyone at the feeling good about the plant so far. Mostly shade. Okay. I have some tomatoes. I gave some tomatoes to a friend who lost hers to a deer. Oh no, that's nice of you. Yes, we gotta share our crops, right? With family and friends and neighbors. So Wayne, I think they haven't self-seeded for me because I actually give all the coriander seeds to my buddy. Oh. Well, that's nice that you share though. Oh, got it. Okay. So, so you can let some of it self-seed and give some away. So you'll get some cilantro for yourself. Hi, Diane. I have an unusual microclimate, everything, an experiment. You know, we have that too. It's like certain places, depends on where you plant, you might have a different climate there. We have a different climate next to the fence and where it's kind of shady and plants can grow uh, at different rates and some will grow slower, some will grow faster. Flies in the garden, anyone has any issues? I haven't had issues with flies in the garden. Now, I, um, I'm i thinking, well, I don't know if I'm gonna swear by this, but planting herbs throughout the garden, it does help repel insect pests like mosquitoes. And I think some of these herbs actually help repel flies too. So again, I plant them throughout the garden. It's not just one area, it's not just one spot or in a container, but the whole garden is surrounded by herbs from like the front and then it goes kind of towards the back here. And I have garlic on the back. So the whole garden is surrounded. So I think that does help repel um, insect pests. So anyone, okay. The store, the store potatoes that were growing, were planted are looking, oh, awesome. So Steven, keep us posted on your potatoes when you harvest them. I need to harvest my potatoes, guys. Um, I'm just leaving them in the ground right now, but the, some of the plants have died back. So it's a good sign when the potato is are ready to be harvested. Now, one thing I do though, before I harvest the potatoes is I let the plants die back. I don't harvest the potatoes until about two weeks when the plants die back completely, when they're light brown or tan. And I leave the potatoes in the ground for at least two weeks. Um, the reason why is it can help cure the potatoes, potatoes and toughen up their skin. So it's kind of like a curing process by leaving them in the ground. Kind of like when you're growing garlic, you leave them in the ground and you stop watering a couple of weeks before you harvest. So with the potatoes, I, I'll be harvesting them sometime this week. So it's been about two weeks since some of the plants died back but that will toughen up again the skin and or thicken them up. So if you want to store some of your potatoes for the fall and winter months, that'll help um, prepare them for storage. So I had a... So spicy cat, oh, wait a minute. Did I go too far? Hi Luke, Luke Metz. Can potatoes handle frost or no? So fresh landscape, generally no, they'll die back. So they usually die back. For me, when I planted potatoes in June, they would die back around October. So not, it's so before our fro first frost date. So they're not cold tolerant crops. So they should be planted again early spring, usually March, um, April, as long as the ground is workable. And if you live again in a milder climate, you can plant them in the winter as long as the ground is workable. Let's see. So Spicy Kai, I watch every chance I get. Oh, thank you. From Inland Empire. Thank you so much, Spicy Kai. Much love. Much love to all of you guys. Really appreciate all you guys and your support. Thank you so much. Um, is it Rakia Tak? How do you store your seeds? Sounds like you have a ton. Of I have lots of, yeah, you know, when you're a gardener, my husband makes fun of me because everywhere we go and if I see seeds, I buy some. Um, and I actually love collecting seeds that are unique um, seeds. Like um, I'm excited about the nine star broccoli. I've never grown it before and the sea kale. And I think I'm also uh, trying out African kale and also, oh, there's another one, Portuguese kale. So, and if I see something online or someone has talked about, you know, I kind of, I like to get my hands on them. But anyway, storing seeds, um, I usually store them in a basement where it's cool. And um, I pack them up in little, the paper coin envelopes or plastic. If I have any plastic, I reuse them, the plastic, little plastic Ziploc. So I put them in the box right now and I leave them in the basement all year round because it is cooler. You don't want to store them where it's warm. Um, the cool will help preserve them more. In fact, some people 
store their seeds in the refrigerator so i haven't tried that one yet um, but rainbow gardens um, i haven't seen her videos in a while but she stores them in the refrigerator in the glass mason, mason jar just you just want to make sure there's no moisture in there so if you decide to do that but it will help preserve your seeds i think maybe in the freezer some people do that but um for me what has worked is I just store them in the basement and generally it's pretty cold down there especially in the winter um, so the average temperature in the basement it could vary between 55 to 65 degrees depending on the season but as long as the temperature stays um, consistently uh, this, um, you know or within range you know so it doesn't always change it'll help um, preserve them and it has worked for me because um, the seeds I've stored for a few years are still viable even some of my bean seeds that were from maybe seven or eight years ago i tested them this past year and i think 70 percent of them were viable so yeah just make sure to sort them away from direct light so somewhere in the dark in a dark cool place and dry so make sure there's no moisture around when you're storing your seeds and i think some people use the plastic bins as well so i'm thinking about doing that right now i just have them in a big box hi jackie good to see you thank you for watching so peppermint oil in water spray around the garden helps flies away oh nice thank you green green life washington so um peppermint oil in water joe mac yes you're welcome joe about the potatoes quietly gardening hi hi there and daisy soto soil mix for potato you know what um I plant most of them in the garden box and in the ground and I just add compost. If you plant them in a container, make sure to use a good quality potting soil. Um, a lot of them have fertilizer on them already. Like Some of them will include worm castings, chicken or cow manure. Um, you can make your own if you want. Um, but right now it's so hard to make potting mix because I cannot even find perlite in the store. So I had to order it on Amazon. Um, but you can make your own out of perlite. Um, sphagnum peat moss and then you can put some compost so the ratio for potting mix would be two parts sphagnum peat moss one part perlite and then about 20 to 25 percent compost or worm casting so you can kind of do combination but one I, I really like that I recently purchased on sale is black gold organic potting mix and I really had great results from that brand they had them at Fred Myers on sale last week for $10 for two cubic feet and that was a really great deal so if you can find something um, on sale that would be even better but black gold's a good brand and i think kellogg kellogg's garden that's another brand of um, potting mix um, that make good quality potting organic potting mix okay so let's see seed hoarders and compulsive buyers anonymous that's gonna be a group oh my gosh we need a group like that wayne <laughs> that's a good name um that's funny. Seed hoarders, okay, anonymous. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh no, 103. Oh, that is hot. Moringa, official chinchilla. If so, what do you use it? So I grew up on Moringa. We call them Malunga in the Philippines. And my papa always made it with in the soup. But some people dehydrate them. Actually, I have I bought some dehydrated Moringa and you can make tea out of them. But as a child, when we used to eat them all the time because they grew everywhere in the Philippines, is um, we just put them in soups. And sometimes I think we just eat them raw, but it's really good with the soup, how my dad prepare, prepared it. Um, so good for you, very nutrient dense. And if you guys um, can grow them, if you have live in a warmer climate, um, Martin Bruchot from Urban Organics Best Gardener, I hope I said that correctly. He grows them. Um, they are, are perennial in his zone because he lives in a warmer climate. I actually sowed some seeds about a month ago and they started emerging finally so i'm growing them as an annual here but i'm going i'm thinking of um overwintering them so hopefully they do well for me and i'll overwinter my baby moringa trees this year and I'll, um and hopefully i can bring them out back out outside as long as they survive the indoor conditions so yeah i love moringa so let's see Um, I have to harvest tomato with new clippers. Oh, so Stephen, nice. I love those clippers. Those garden shears. I'm glad that you got it finally. How many cilantro seeds would I need to plant for a small patch? Also a good harvest. Um, so 
in a small patch, maybe like a foot, like a square foot. You can probably throw like maybe if you want to do it in mass, you can do like maybe throw 20 seeds in there. Um, I usually sow more because in case they get dug up by animals. So I always put more and then if you need to thin them out, you can. I honestly don't thin them out and I think you've seen my um, cilantro harvest video that was about maybe three weeks ago and I showed you how I grew them in mass. So I don't thin them out. They just grow and they look fine. I wonder if you can see it from here. I'm going to turn this. So where's the cilantro? Oh goodness. So the cilantro is right, right here and I already pulled some out so I let some go to seed this right right there so I had a whole patch I removed a lot because I didn't want them all to go to seed so those are flowering right now um, and I get I don't I don't thin them out but um, I would yeah at least 20 you know I usually just um, get a teaspoon so I bought a teaspoon full and I would just sow them and I just let them be so if you have extra cilantro seeds but if you don't want to you know waste them then of course you want to be conservative and just sow maybe 20 seeds um, but um, I always let them go to seed so I always have seeds on hand that I actually I save some of them um, also so I always um, have them um, to store and have extra seeds which is good and I encourage you guys to uh, save you, your seeds if you're not saving it just because um, there are some seeds that I can't find in the stores right now so I encourage you guys if you have any plants that are bolting just maybe let one or two plants go to seed so you have some extra um, to uh, use for or plant later so let me go back in here um, I have seed I, I save everywhere oh my gosh me too <laughs> Um, where do you like to buy your seeds from? That is from Jean Pratt. So I buy seeds from multiple vendors, just depending. So, um, but when you're, when we, the subject of seed buying. So first I want to address it because it's a good idea to buy seeds locally if you can, even from a local nursery or a local seed shop, because the seeds that they sell are acclimated to your climate. And it's more likely that they will grow for you if you buy them locally. Now you can branch out, which I do, I buy seeds everywhere because some of the vegetables, even though they're not grown in, our, in your own climate, they will acclimate slowly as well. And as long as you give them the right environment, they can grow in your climate. So, but it's a good idea to, you know, um, uh, try out your local seed shops first. And I think, um, what's the local one I bought from? I think Small Island Seed Company that's on Etsy. There's a few vendors I can't remember, but I bought some online. Um, seedsnow.com, and they used to be in Washington, but they moved to California. Baker Creek, I go there too. What else? Um, and sometimes I go to Fred Meyer. So if I if I see seeds that I, I've grown before, um, and I know that they do well in my climate, I buy them. And sometimes I do experiments. And I haven't had a good luck with the purple bok choy. That's a hybrid. So for some reason, they don't grow for me. And it's my second year trying to, trying to grow them. And they just keep bolting. Um, probably because of the weather fluctuations. So um, it's just good to experiment sometimes. But then if you learn, it's a good learning experience. Because then you probably won't spend your money and, you know, waste your money if it's not going to grow for you. Um, Etsy, I just kind of randomly look through Etsy, the Etsy shop, there's a lot of people that sell seeds there. Um, if, if there's specific seeds that I'm looking for, I think there's a seed shop, it's called pa Pan Asia Seeds, um, based in the East Coast. And they sell a lot of seeds and the price is, um, really good price. I mean, um, very economical. So Pan Asia on Etsy, um, is a good one that I've shopped from before. Um, and also one seed shop um, is another good one and it is ran by Praxis55712 and that's Ray. So he's got an awesome shop and I think the seed packets are only 50 cents. Oh gosh, maybe a dollar now. I, I bought some last month. I, I actually ordered twice from him um, this uh, past spring. So the little seed shop. I can't remember off the top of my head um, which other ones, but like I said, if I just go to a store and I see some seeds, I just buy them. So I don't really have just one place where I buy seeds. I buy them, buy them every, from everywhere. So um, I think that way you can, you know, you have more variety <laughs> and more options, right? And it's also a good idea to talk to your um, gardeners, gardeners in your community to see what grows well in your zone. So I would do that first before you start buying seeds because it's, there's a plant that grows well in your zone that someone else is growing and that 
it's something that you will eat and that you like, that's a good idea. You can start from there before buying. So let's see. Oh goodness, am I behind? I am behind. <laughs> um, I found great seeds. Oh Johnny, Johnny seeds and rare seeds. Yes, Baker Creek rare seeds and True Leaf. I forgot about True Leaf. I bought some microgreen seeds from True Leaf. That's a good one. Um, also, so Wayne Kita Zawa Seed Company for Asian seeds. Thank you. So guys, did you see that? So another Asian seed or for Asian vegetables or crops. I have bought from and my gardener. Oh, that's right. I forgot about my gardener. I think I bought from from him in the past. Uh, Fresh landscape Tagalog. Okay, so I grew up here, uh, moved here when I was 10, and so I only remember mainly foods and bad words. And um, my mom spoke a different language, you know, there's different dialects in the Philippines, and so she's, she would speak that in English, and so we don't we didn't always speak Tagalog, and of course we have to be fluent in English, and so I kind of lost it. So it's like when you don't lose it, you lose it. When you use it, you lose it. Um, but I do... <laughs> I teach my kids a little bit of Tagalog, so the words I remember, a lot of food, short phrases, and you know, for some reasons, I think a lot of people remember bad words. I don't know why. Bad words and food. Yeah, so, and I cook Filipino food, so I, you know, I kind of want to try to bring in our culture still, of course. You want to install that, it's important. And so, yeah, <laughs> just how I um, kind of stick, you know, bring in the culture in our family. It's, um, sometimes it's, it's through food, right? You're welcome, Jean. And James F. from Michigan. You are welcome. Thank you for joining. Even though I got cut off earlier. <laughs> oh, yes. So Stephen says, label your seeds and and put the date. So if it's a seeds that you the seeds that you harvest this year, label your seeds and put the, the, the year of the seeds. That way, you know, um, that's if they're still viable if it's four years from now depending on what the seed is sometimes they lose their viability um between like maybe two to four years depending on what it is going out to the garden oh awesome danielle have fun in the garden oh territorial seed okay i haven't checked them out yet thank you wayne yes oh and so um is it Rak Rakiatak? Thank you, everyone. She's just saying, uh, or um, saying that all the knowledge that's been oh being shared. So really appreciate that we're all communicating and sharing um, each other's experiences and tips. So it's really helpful for our community. After all, we are a community, so that's what it's about. So I appreciate that, guys. Everyone. Okay, let's see here. So Wayne. Okay, oops, that's someone else. Sorry. I think we're caught up. Frank Rico, do you think it would be a good idea to propagate cuttings from a disease? Oh, I wouldn't personally. I, I wouldn't um, propagate. Oh, wait, if it's a disease plant, you know what? You can try, um, but that cutting might end up rotting. And that has happened to me. I tried to propagate from a mint plant that was in the shade. And the rest of the plants, plants were covered in powdery mildew. So I cut off a top that didn't have the powdery mildew. However, um, when I try to propagate it uh, in the water and I would change the water daily it eventually started to rot so um, you can try it but it's also risky because um, it might already be infected with the spores or whatever disease it has so I would try to find another plant to propagate it from that's not infected by any diseases oh it's loud oh it's like a rescue helicopter um, let's see way I will just compost them when they're done, especially if they're determinate time. Oh, it's someone else. Okay. So gang, I should join a local garden club. Yes, you can, um, you know what? Even if you're on an, another um, social media, like on Instagram, I follow a lot of people that are in, my, in the same zone as I am. Um, even on YouTube, if you know anyone here, you guys, you can put your zone. And then if you know anyone, you guys can follow each other. So that's a great way to gain um, information and knowledge from each other, right? So, um, also, gang, if you don't use it, yeah, you lose it. I'm, <laughs> oh, thank you. Gargamel? Is it Gargamel? Did I say that right? Oh, goodness. 
Thank you so much. Kim asks, are you still planting or when do you fall your... Yes, I am still planting. In fact, I started my brassica seeds. Oh gosh, what else did I start? It's upstairs. And I meant to show you guys, but I forgot to grab it. And I'm down here. Um, so I started a lot of um, kale, brassica plant seeds. And I direct sowed some on the shade because if it's too hot, guys, um, they might not um, survive the heat. Sometimes the seedlings can get killed, especially if it's cold weather crops. So if you're starting, if you want a fall garden, you can start some indoors. It's already almost August, though. Um, if you already started some, you want to pump them out. I'm going to say at least six to eight weeks before your first frost date. So that way you have, they have time to establish themselves in the ground. And I'm also still sowing squash seeds, like summer squash, because they can mature in about 50 days, depending on variety. Also some cucumbers can mature around 55 to 65 days. So if you have full sun, you can still start, start them right away, but I would do it as soon as possible. Um, and also you want to think about your first frost date and count back because you don't want to start crops too late. Um, especially if you're going to start summer squash and um, cucumber. So my first frost day is generally, oh gosh, I think it's like the first week of November, so I still have time. And um, you want to start them at least, I'm going to say about 60 to 80 days before your first frost day. So that way you can still get a harvest. But if you're planting cool crops, you can start them now. Um, it's almost the end of July. So you actually can sow some now, even peas. So if you are if you want to start some peas, you can sow peas right now, um, depending on the weather. So you guys have to think about um, the weather. If it's too hot, then you might have to put it off another week or so. We're supposed to have cool a cool week next week. So I might actually sow some peas this week, keep the soil moist. And as the cooler, cooler weather comes, then those will start to seed. Uh, lettuce, uh, kale, carrots, let's see. I think I sold some beets about two weeks ago. That was, about, that was two weeks ago, charred. So a lot of the cool weather crops, so I'm still kind of sowing. And I was actually uh, sowing them every two to three weeks throughout the summer. So I hope that helps. I hope that answered your question. Um, that was about fall crops, right? Oh, and don't forget um, to plant your garlic in October. So a few weeks before your first frost date. So I'll be planting garlic, so stay tuned, guys. So Blast 2 is from Zone 5B. So um, official chinchilla. Yes, actually I planted some Scarlet Runner beans next to the Jerusalem artichokes. Here, I'll flip the camera over so you can see. These are um, younger plants. Oh, that's too close. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, can you see this? Oh, not that one. Where is it at? I think it's this one right there. So this is um, Jerusalem artichokes in a, in a 25 gallon pot. And those are Scarlet Runner beans. And you can kind of see they're on the bottom still. So those were sowed later um, on this uh, summer. So I'm letting them climb. And I actually sowed some whole beans with some sunflowers too. So I'm doing that as well. Okay, I'm back. Whoopsies. So that was so wait everybody take a minute oh my merchandise i should um redo them so um i wanted to put more for i think the youth sizes for bigger kids i think i only have toddler sizes in there and i haven't worked on that so and my daughter my eldest daughter our, our eldest daughter designed this beautiful um, garden scene and I haven't gotten a chance because I'm not sure how to I don't do the screen printing so I would have to ship it somewhere to copy the image um, but I want to keep the original so if you guys have an idea how that works because I don't want to send out the original copy of this beautiful um, drawing so maybe I'd have to scan it so but I want to print those on t-shirts um, such a beautiful she did such a beautiful work Thank you, Wayne. Appreciate that. Irene. <laughs> yeah, we're Pinay. That means Filipino. That's what we call each other. Oh, that's a mosquito or maybe, I don't know, bug. Let's see. 
So Stephen Crockett, living in the tropical environment, Belize. Oh wow, mustard greens. So you'd have to probably grow mustard green. Oh, keep that. Um, um, during the winter, fall and winter, when the weather is cooler, especially if you live in a tropical tropical climate, because um, they are a cooler crop. I'm going to move the phone because the sun is actually starting to move that way, and I don't want to have to get disconnected again. Okay. So yeah, try to plant your cooler crops if you live in a warmer climate in the fall um, and winter. So let's see, so greetings from Chris K from Zone 8B, hello. Oh, squash bugs. I haven't had issues with those, thank goodness. Chicken adobo. Irene, do you, do you grow bay leaf? My bay leaf is getting really big. I cannot believe how big it's gotten. I think I featured that on the in the live stream. And that was started from a small cutting like this. Three years ago, my mom started a, um, a cutting of the bay tree and it's humongous. I think it's about four feet tall and we're going to try to propagate it. I just planted sugar snap peas next to my sunflowers. Oh, you should climb. Yeah, hoping they climb. I've never done it. Yes, that's a good idea, Kim. So that's what I'm doing with the beans and um, and sunflowers too over there. I have some beans plant, pole beans planted. Yeah, mine is already starting to climb. So they wrap around the, the stock. So then we don't have to put up a trellis. I've noticed that what I think is a mildew of some sort just starting. Oh no. So Chris K, is it white, powder, white powdery mildew, kind of like a fuzzy um, on the leaves? If it is, you can try. There's a couple things you can try. Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember the ratio. I hope I'm correct. But I believe it's a tablespoon baking soda um, and a little bit of maybe a couple drops of dish soap to one gallon water and spray your plants. And I would spray before the sun shines. The sun shines on your plants so it doesn't burn the leaves. Now you can also do a milk solution. And if you guys remember the, the ratio, please let us know in the chat. But the milk solution is a little different. You would spray it right when it's sunny because the sun rays activate some kind of the enzyme or amino acid in the milk that helps eradicate the powdery mildew. And I think the ratio for the milk solution, it could be one part milk, oh gosh, so as much as 10 parts water. If you guys know anything about the milk solution, I have not used it. Um, last year, I didn't really deal with powdery mildew and that's something that you can prevent so as long as you plant your um, squash plants and cucumbers in full sun and even tomatoes and space them out properly um, at least for tomatoes two to three feet squash plants about 18 inches 24 inches apart so mildew <coughs> excuse me um, they'll be less susceptible to to uh, fungus and other diseases diseases or even pests so hydrogen peroxide there you go that's a good one thank you steven so yeah so you've got the hydrogen peroxide your baking soda and your milk solution so um fresh landscape you can also use oh hold on half a cup of milk and half a cup of water okay half a cup of milk so equal parts thank you fresh landscape appreciate it awesome i knew you guys would come through <laughs> so thanks so much been wondering why they are wilting Okay, let's see. So Wayne says you can grow bay leaves. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, I have to do this. Tacoma. Oh, absolutely. I think you want you have a warmer climate. Let me see if I can show you. I'm gonna turn the camera. It's right. Can you see it? It's right here. There's my bay leaf. So it's about four feet tall, and the spread is about three feet. I did prune it back. I'm going to try to propagate that other big stem. Actually, my mom's going to try and help me this week. She bought a kit. I think it's called air pruning. I've never tried it before. So we're going to try to propagate so I can get another tree from that. And these are, they can get really big if you plant them in the ground and plant them in full sun. I think they get to about 20 feet. I'm trying to keep my compact. So I'm going to um, try to do a topiary. So as I prune, I dry the leaves and also propagate the new cuttings. Um, yeah, so if you're starting a newer plant, and that was Wayne Wright, make sure to mulch. So the first year I got it, it was this tiny. And I planted it straight in the ground and I mulched it with some wood chips, about a couple of inches of wood chips. So you want to protect um, the roots, okay? So if you decide to get a bay leaf, 
make sure to protect the roots, especially in the winter. Oh goodness, oh, let's go back here. Oh no, so Jean, okay. Oh, bat leaf. Well, um, also you wanna make sure that the soil drains well and you can grow them in a pot, but I think they're more insulated in the ground. Just make sure that you don't want it to um, have root rot. So um, I would add compost to the soil if you're planting in the ground, so make sure it drains well. So they can actually thrive in a, almost like a drier condition because they are uh, really, uh, native to the Mediterranean region. So you don't need to water them as much. You know, I rarely water, water it. So except when it's, it's gotten hot. So I was watering it maybe twice a week this past week. So I learned a trick, Jackie Horsley, in sowing cool weather seeds in hot weather, outside put cardboard over the seeds to keep them moist. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Jackie. So um, she mentioned when you're sowing during, seeds during the hot weather, place a cardboard to keep it moist so the soil doesn't dry out. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Danielle, I just got out of the hospital yesterday, so I really need to make sure. Oh, I hope you're doing okay, Danielle. Take care of yourself first. This is the camera. I keep looking here because the chat's on the side. So, Danielle, take care of yourself first. Okay, um, the garden can wait, and maybe someone can help you with the garden too. And take it easy. Let's see, um, quietly gardening. I used the milk solution, and it starved it off for a while. Nice. Okay, Gangin, I was told one part hydrogen peroxide, not parts water. Awesome. Okay, Chris K, you're welcome. You're so welcome, Chris K. No, it's actually, okay, it's a California Bay Laurel or European one. Ooh. You know what? I'm not sure which one this is. My mom just said bay leaf, so I'm not sure if it's the California, but I, I assumed it was the European one. It's, it's got the dark glossy leaves. So, because when I looked in the, when I did some research online, it looks like it's the one from, from Europe or, yeah. So I'm, I, ha I don't know how the California, I will have to look it up. California Bay, okay. Something I need to research on. Hi, Didi or Brian. For powdery mildew, I paint and dip the leaves in neem oil solution. So that's another tip. I'm moving this again. Another tip from Didi O'Brien is um, neem oil solution for the powdery mildew. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna make sure that the phone doesn't get too hot again. So, not sure if you guys saw that. Let's see, oh my phone is dirty, I think. Let's see here. And the California one has pointier leaves. Okay, I don't think these are the pointier one. I think I know what you're talking about because my mom bought a new bay leaf plant two years ago and it didn't look the same and it was skinnier and maybe pointy. So that might be the California. So this might be the, um, uh, the sweet bay laurel tree. So maybe I, I do have the European one. You're welcome, Danielle. You take care. So green life washing for future. McClendon Hardware carry large bag of perlite. Oh, okay. McClendon Hardware has a uh, big bag of perlite. Yeah, I went to Lowe's and Home Depot, Fred Meyer. They didn't have perlite. And that was, um, I think, two months ago. And so I just ended up buying a big bulk one. I think it was four cubic, cubic feet, but it was pricey. I found it on, um, on Amazon. But yeah, I had a hard time because like sometimes I like to make my own potting soil and I, I was able to find, per, uh, not perlite, sphagnum peat moss, so that one they had. So let's see here, I didn't re reapply, don't know if I should, but I took the plant out of the house because it stopped making flowers. Oh, did I miss something? Making flowers. I'm not sure if I'm someone, oh, it stopped making flowers because of the powdery mildew. That could happen because it can affect the plant growth. So you want to take care of it as soon as possible. So Wayne, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And the leaf tree. Yes, no problem. Let me know if you end up getting a bay leaf, bay leaf um, tree. I don't know if you can get them locally um, in a nursery, but I know I've seen someone sell on Amazon and also on Etsy. Let's see here. And her future, okay. I'm just scrolling down. You're okay. I think I read it already. I think I'm caught up. 
And awesome. Why are the, the bay leaves you can cook with? So bay leaves, we mainly use it for this uh, Filipino dish. It's called adobo. It can put chicken or um, pork, but um, we do mainly chicken. A lot of people use it also for uh, soups and stews. So there's a lot of um, dishes that people use it. Mainly, I think stoops and soups, <laughs> soups and stews. So I'm not sure what else. That's pretty much what I use it for, but. It's supposed to, I think there's some health benefits and some people extract it for the oil or extract the oil, essential oil from it. Okay, so um, Rocky, Rocky Tech says bay leaves make good tea. Oh my gosh, thank you. I'll have to try that. I can um, steep some bay, bay leaves and I'm, I'm sure it has um, similar uh, beneficial properties um, like other, other herbs. So... It's got a lot of um, beneficial properties. I did. I need to do my research on that. But um, the tea, Italian foods. Okay, there we go. So, is it Jean or John? John, I hope I'm saying that correctly. So, Italian foods use bay leaves. So, oh, you already ordered your Green Life um, purple tree colored seeds. Oh, you're fast. Did we just talk about that earlier today? Are you still growing kale that looks like a tree? Yes, oh Jackie. So um, yes, actually all of them grow into trees. It seems like it when they start to flower. So I still have one in the ground that I didn't pull out. I'm letting it mature and produce as much seeds as it, as, as it can. And it's a thousand head kale. So it's another one that I want to share um, with you guys. But the only thing is I'm concerned is I hope that it didn't cross with the other kale plants that I had last year. Cause I also planted dinosaur kale. And I'm hoping that it didn't cross with that. And the other ones, and Russian kale. And I also am drying the rest of the kale seeds in the greenhouse. So those ones I pulled, pulled up uh, prematurely. Because they were just in the way and I wanted to make room for the other plants. So put the, okay, so Steven puts them in chili. Oh, the bay leaf. Good. I use bay leaves for my flower to keep bugs. Oh, Joe Matt, good idea. Okay, one, one year, this is years ago, I found like a, a larvae in the bag of flour. So, so if you guys saw that comment um, or tip from Joe, put bay leaves in, the, in your flour to keep the bugs out. So I, was, I would assume that you dried the bay leaves first, right? And then you could put it in a flour. Good idea because of the essential oils. So I think it actually helps repel certain insect pests too, pests too because of the essential oils um, within the bay, the bay leaf. Let's see here. So comfrey uh, seems too hard to find. I've never seen comfrey here. Or cross pollination problems very interesting yeah um it's happened to me i planted dinosaur kale two years ago and another kale variety i think it's just a normal curly maybe blue scotch but my dinosaur kale that grew this past year and last season looked different this year it had the the same bumps or texture on the leaves but the leaves leaves were super wide and i knew it was dinosaur kale that must have crossed with another kale variety but usually dinosaur dinosaur kale has slender leaves and the, this one they were this wide maybe eight to nine inches wide and the leaves weren't as crinkly as it usually they usually are so but i'm hoping that the thousand head kale um if it does cross cross with another kale hopefully that the leaves will remain large they were huge leaves i think some were almost two feet long and about maybe almost a foot wide so that's a really great kale plant to grow and um, hoping hoping to share that with you guys so you can grow them as well so, so use whole dry leaves in place of top don't crush okay so whole dry leaves put dry leaves on the top of the the flower thank you i put mine in my homemade tomato sauce oh yummy that sounds so good okay guys so i think i'm going to get going I don't think there's any more questions, but thank you so much for joining today's chat. And sorry about the technical difficulties. <laughs> Let's see. Also, so all fresh landscape wants to know your tomato sauce recipe. Oh, okay. So green life grows comfrey. Comfrey. Did I say it wrong? <gasps> good night. Um, good evening. Uh, Jean Pratt. 
And gang, thanks for you're welcome. Absolutely. Thank you for um channeling me today. Really appreciate it. I hope that you guys find it helpful. The perennial plants and some shade tolerant crops. Good night, James and Wayne. You're welcome. Some seeds from oh winter. Okay, have a great evening. And um you too, Joe Mag and Chris K Chris K. And Rakitak. Is that Rakitak? Thank you. Thank you too. And you're very welcome. And stay tuned, guys. I'll keep you posted. So I want to try to do a couple of giveaways next week um, to celebrate the 100k subscribers. So I'm excited to celebrate with you guys. You're welcome, Teresa. You are so welcome. You too, French Landscape. Thank you. And Martin, thank you so much, brother. Thank you. You take care. Make sure to check out Organic's Best Urban Gardener. He has a lot of um, fruit trees and also moringa tree. He grows them. So make sure to stop by and check out his channel, okay? Thank you, Irene. You too. You too, sis. Okay. Oh, this log office right here. Good night. I'll see you next uh, Wednesday's live. And make sure to stay, stay tuned on the community page because I'll be updating on the giveaways that I'll be doing next week, okay? You guys take care. Love you all. Bye.